2021 meeting of the Town of Southampton Planning Board in accordance with the Governor's Executive Order 202.1 and its related extensions and until further notice, all of the board's meetings will be held remotely by a video conference. So we ask the public to continually check the town's website for updates and new information. May we have a roll call, Gloria? Chairman LaFaro. Present. Vice Chair Finity. Present. The secretary is here. Board member Zuccarelli. Where did he go? He was just here. Perfect. There he is, there's John. I'm here. Board member Long. <laughs> Present. And board member Catalanato. Present. We have a quorum, we've got everyone. Can we join in for the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of, of the United States, States of America, America. And, and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under, God, under God, indivisible, indivisible with, with liberty and justice, and justice for all. Thank you. Any minutes, Gloria? Yes, um, it, March 11th, 21. March 11, 2021, okay. motion to accept. Dennis, second by Robin, all in favor? Aye. Opposed, abstention, six in favor. Okay, uh, we have a full agenda posted on the town's website for today's meeting. The town's planning staff, as well as applicants and their representatives will be participating via Zoom webinar, which is being moderated by CTV. Charles Certain will be muting and holding the speakers in a virtual waiting room until it's their time to give testimony before the board. A reminder that applicants and their agents should state their name and address for the record. As is typical, there are no public comments allowed during our daytime meetings, nor is it appropriate for the public to use the chat function to comment on applications. The link to participate in this meeting via Zoom can be found on the town's website. Its meeting is also being live streamed on the town's website on the town clerk's meeting portal. If you're having difficulty accessing the meeting, please visit the town clerk's meeting portal and click on the instructions link. Board members who must recuse themselves from any application will state so on the record and be, will be removed from the meeting until the end of the discussion and vote on the application. Finally, in accordance with the governor's order, this meeting will be recorded and transcribed at a later date and will be made available to the public. So I will close the afternoon session and go into our work session with concern for independent living. And Michelangelo, do you want to give us, are your applicants here? Uh, no, it's, it's just, uh, just Claire and I will be presenting this. Oh, okay. At this time, it's uh, somewhat of a, we're in the process of just kind of receiving your comments, whereas when it's more official, if we go to the pass the neg deck or positive deck, then we would bring in the applicant when the town board uh, asks for your comments uh, as per a secret process. Okay, they go to assume lead agency though. Correct. As of, so on April 22nd, Janice and I uh, introduced this application to you. Um, and then on the 25th of May, just two days ago, the town board assumed lead agency. Um, we're now in the process of preparing secret documents, uh, the EAF part two and part three, and um, Janice and the town board would like your input um, and, and your comments at this time. Um, so we can go through this via the EAF part two, or um, at, you've also had a chance to look at it, if I'm not mistaken, and this information has been presented to you Previously, um, maybe you have comments that you're are prepared or ready. When was it presented to us? On April 22nd. Did you go in depth or what was the? Uh, it was an introductory. Uh, we, we, you had received the AF prior to that and then we had introduced it again, but we do have the concept plan here and we could refresh your memory if you'd like. And yeah, I think that would be helpful. Sure, of course. So let me share the screen. So, um, you see that? Yes. So what we're looking at here is a, a nine acre lot. Um, and what the applicant has proposed is to subdivide the lot. And in the back, in the, in the first portion, they, they would leave alone, which is the existing full gospel church property. And the back portion of the lot, which is roughly five acres, they would clear. And um, let's just read my notes if you don't mind. 
So this is going to be for 60 units, um, five two-story residential apartment buildings, two of which are comprised of 14 units, one building with 12 units and two buildings with 10 apartment units for a total of 60. Um, this is that the applicant has defined this as affordable, but in this case, I'll just read their definition of uh, the concern. Southampton promises to be a design for a moderate income, affordable residential development with provisions for veterans and the disabled. 100% um, of the rental housing shall be community benefit units in perpetuity. Um, and therefore they are asking for us to enact 330-8, which uh, would double their yield, um, being that this is a nonprofit. Um, they would have an STP in the top right corner, if you can see that, um, surrounded by vegetation. Um, and we have asked the applicant to, so at, at this time, they've, the initial application had a uh, had access point from County Road 39 and access on Hillcrest Terrace. We've asked them at this point to remove that. And so there's only single access from County Road 39. Um, and we've re worked with them to redesign it. So this is the parking and the uh, development would be more uh, suitable for uh, engaging with the outdoor environment with outdoor patios in the rear and outdoor working spaces, workout spaces. Um, in the uh, front of some of these affordable units. Um, so I don't know, at this time, if, you, if there are questions or I can go on further. Um, are there any community buildings? Yeah, so this is asking. Can you point those out? We've lost your audio. We've lost your audio completely. Uh, how about now? Okay. <laughs> Bizarre, but uh, yeah, so there's a 6,000 square foot community center that Claire is highlighting uh, right in the south side of the lot. Um, just so we're all uh, aware on the south of the of the subject property is uh, Hillcrest Terrace and it's a uh, 50 high, uh, high uh, density. Uh, I think it's R10, R20 in the village and unfortunately I think in the town. Seasons Lanes to the left and on the right hand side we have uh, the rehabilitation uh, center, um, which obviously we can't see in this concept map. Um, <clears throat> let's see. And the church mm -hmm. remaining, the church mm -hmm. will keep its two acres in the front uh, and will remain four, as a functioning church. Four acres in the front. Four acres. And it's unclear if they would remain as a functioning church. Um, their EAF was not too specific on future of that site. But this has to go through a subdivision and change of zone. Correct. It's a process, right? Yeah, so first would be the change of zone, then they'd come to the planning board with a subdivision. Wouldn't, wouldn't um, not knowing what was gonna happen with that church have, may have a, a potentially large effect on um, traffic? Yeah, perhaps. So, is it appropriate for us to want to look at both together? I can make that a comment. In other words, so, not, not, not a segmented seeker review. Mm -hmm. So Mike, should we, should we go to the elephant in the room now or do you want to keep, should we still keep nipping around the edges as Claire giggles? Dennis, Dennis you go. I have about four yeah, let's questions. Let's hear you. So I'll go to the elephant in the room. How does one make a left-hand turn out of this site? How does one head westbound? The applicant has determined via their traffic analysis that there will be uh, four left-hand turns an hour um, at peak rush hour. What? Well, I listen, I don't know we, how. Know, we know living here that that's just a, a bald-faced lie. You cannot make a left, Deborah's, Den, Dennis is right. You can't make a left-hand turn out of here without killing yourself. And so as per the coordination of secret, the county did uh, respond and has voiced concern with the left hand turn of out of course that. Is. So okay. that is going, at, you know, as per our secret review, that is a point of concern. Right. Have to Here, here's, right how I, here's how westbound traffic should go. And I participated, and you were on board too, Jackie, in the subdivision directly to the west. You exit the site yep. on Seasons Lane, you head out to uh, 
Bishop's Lane North, make a left turn, go down to McGee Street, make a right turn, and head to the signalized intersection. How's that for a thought? The town board, when they considered to, elected to consider, mm -hmm. prohibited the concept of using season lane. Yeah, I was gonna, just gonna say that. And what reasoning did they get for that? So they, they were concerned about uh, traffic running from Seasons Lane, because at the time they were also introducing Hillcrest Terrace uh, into this site plan application, uh, uh, concept plan. And so um, they didn't want traffic to flow through these two neighborhoods. So we limited uh, Seasons Lane. We, so we took Seasons Lane and Hillcrest Terrace out with the hope that they would maintain access or uh, obtain, up, excuse me, obtain access with the rehabilitation center, which has not occurred yet and may not occur. That was, that was gonna be my, my question as well. Have they looked at the ability to, um, to, to go exit through that property, but that also is not an easy left turn going north. I think that, 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 I'm sorry, go ahead. No, do you see the key map in the upper right hand? Yeah. Yeah. Do you see Seasons Lane, why we extended that Seasons Lane <laughs> to the edge to the edge of this property? Did, did the town board that. realize why that was laid out that way? We seasons Lane goes right behind that development, right, Dennis? That's correct. And the yeah. reason Seasons Lane was extended there is to allow this parcel, because we knew this was going to come in for development, is to allow this parcel to access through Seasons Lane and uh, get to a signalized device, which is on North McGee Street and head westbound. Where do they have to go though before they get to McGee? They go out to the North uh, North Bishops, which is the street that runs between the two PC Richards sites. You know, yeah. You, yeah. okay, that's where I, let, that's where that development ends out. It's on Williams Way. So when you head to North Bishops, you don't make a right to go to the, the North Highway. You make a left. You go down to North McGee Street, stop sign, make a right, good visibility, and that takes you past Lecon Court out to the signalized device. And then you can make controlled left-hand turn and head westbound. And that North McGee Street, it, well, it's McGee Street there. Um, that is ch a challenging place to get to actually cross the highway because it backs up with oh, yeah. traffic and there's an application for a swimming pool um, where the, um, I guess it was some sort of a development center on McGee Street, just south of, south of the gas station. Um, so there, there's potentially a lot of a, a more traffic if that development goes through. But as opposed to trying to make a left-hand turn on County Road 39. I mean, at least you have an interest that you might have to wait a few cycles for the light, but this, to, I mean, all our planning doctrines and is to consolidate sites and feed them to signalized uh, intersections. That's why we do cross access easements. That's why we do collector streets. Claire will, you know, certainly realize this and validate that. <laughs> Yeah. But this doesn't go through Hillcrest, right? Because that no, doesn't go through the Hillcrest. Hillcrest, no. okay. Because the, the Hillcrest is marginal because there's no signal at the bottom of Hillcrest. You'd still have to make a left turn right. on that busy North Sea Road corridor. Right. And um, there are small route roads going through yeah. Hillcrest. Yeah, but to get westbound out of this site, mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's you know, yeah. there's, there's going to be traffic review. Of course, we'll have traffic engineers weigh in on this, but. But if the applicant even contemplates four left turns, they've done some study about four left turns, that's because the people are not alive anymore who made the left turns. You know, it's, um, it's so I think that you should take this recommendation. I'm sorry, Jackie. You should take this recommendation. You're making a report to yes, the we did. Board. So um, okay. the notes are understanding that the town board requested no access from Seasons Lane and Hillcrest Terrace. We'd still like to investigate Seasons Lane and Hillcrest Terrace as potential cross access. Yeah, but yeah. But, but 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 track but track it Seasons Lane to Dennis. Give them the track. Yeah. Seasons, yeah, Lane. Seasons Lane to North Bishops. 
and down to North McGee Street, or actually McGee Street at that point, right. and then to the signalized intersection at McGee Street. Okay. And also what we need to tell the town board is Seasons Lane was extended to the edge of this property in contemplation of utilization for traffic out of this site. So they're, they're going contrary to past planning practices. So the, the corridor study, uh, I believe, as you said, Dennis, re recommended that this would extend as cross access with the idea that it was contemplated as um, similar in nature uh, residential, similar residential zoning, but because they've asked for multifamily was uh, the point of contention as to why we should not extend it. Is, this is just the rationale of the town board at the time of their- Still residential, it's not like you're putting, it's not like you're bringing industrial traffic or truck traffic in there. It's still, it's still gonna be residential vans, vehicles. Um, right, okay. That's a good point. That's really Is there good. any contemplation that they that they would? I know this is state put a roundabout at that intersection, which cries out for a roundabout, where you have four major roads coming in. Not, not that I'm aware of. Because if so, anything exiting here could go right right into a traffic circle, come around, and then go west it really lends itself to a traffic circle. We could, um, um, I would make that recommendation. We could put that as an alternative. Mm -hmm. Okay. Jenny, could you define, I don't know where you're talking about putting the traffic circle. Right at that light. At the 7-Eleven intersection. Okay. Yeah, where the garage is, um, you know, gas stations on one side. But that would take, gas that would on take the left years. Side. That would, remember we're trying to get a traffic circle up at the, um, at the Flying Point intersection. I know, I and, know, there's no progress. But that would hold up this project, you know. Yeah, yeah. Put it this way, they could set it up for Seasons Lane and then when, and then if and when that traffic circle ever materializes, they could, they they could, could opt to close it could, off. They could use it, it would be so much better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But of course, you know, it would be nice if the town had a traffic engineer. I have uh, a couple of points that I want to make, some planning points. Does any, does any, okay. Um, does the zone change revert to the underlying zoning in the future? Or is, I heard you use the words in perpetuity. The, the words in perpetuity are in reference to the affordability of the units. So the these, units. these will be deed restrictions. Yes. What's the mechanism? Deed restriction. A deed, a deed well, restriction. It, it's apartments, but the deed for the property will say affordable forever. Okay. But there. So. Go ahead. Uh, Go so, ahead. But there, are, besides income, um, aren't there other limitations on who should live, who can live there? I know you said something about um, veterans. Correct. Um, veterans and um, I'm just going to use the exact word. Disability. Yes, disabled. and the get, disabled. Get preference? Um, there is a preference for veterans and um, a certain portion of them, of it will be allocated to veterans and the disabled. Um, and then a certain portion will be allocated for those who are income restricted. I thought the preferences were not allowed um, when speaking of affordability. I, I, know, I know we encountered that when, um, when they built the SPI on Commons here. They, uh, a number of different preferences were mentioned, but then um, apparently they were all uh, against fair housing law. I can look into it, but my understanding of, of preference had to do with uh, for um, where individuals were coming from. Like there was concern that the, this need was not satisfying <laughs> residents of the town of Southampton, residents uh, all across the country. Uh, well, I would, make, I would make I would make a point of Craig's comment that fair housing could not be <coughs> referenced uh, out as he's had the experience with Spee on Commons. That was all affordable, Craig? That's correct, yeah. Yeah. And a couple of things, I mean, um, the difference between theory and practice, actually, you know, Spee on Commons is a model of success in my opinion. 
Um, we, we spoke about um, concerns about traffic. We didn't see any significant traffic increase. Uh, but what we did see, and um, you know, this works in progress actually, uh, the STP, which was relatively close to residential, um, has uh, exhaust fans and the whirling sounds of the exhaust fans um, came a nuisance to um, the adjoining properties. And the other thing is uh, we had a significant amount of light pollution, which I know they're trying to address, but um, it was not insignificant. <laughs> no, so I, I would be mindful of those two things. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, Michelangelo, my understanding, and I've read some about this just from the newspapers, is that this is money basically coming from sources specifically to people who have challenges, whether it's veterans or people's with, people with disability. And so that may, and I think they're, they're, they're suggesting less parking than we would normally expect because a lot of these people are gonna have cars and drive. May that be why they're talking so few left turns? Um, I don't recall the, I, I mean, it's something I might have to get back to you with. I don't recall their uh, rationale behind the left, the, the so few left turns. Um, but again, I think it was like, thir I think it was 13 an hour for every X amount of minutes. Um, but what, I, I can look further into that. What about the parking? Am I incorrect that th they're, they, they're, requesting less parking because they don't they don't feel they need it oh interesting um it's something we might have to take a second look at so but it's an issue so parking if they're providing less than they need to do an analysis obviously um so um yeah their argument of their less parking but if they are then we'll put it as an issue definitely but parking should be analyzed anyways and yeah. that is, right okay great so I, I have a couple of parking questions. Um, so the area is not well served if served at all by public transit. Am I correct? There is no bus stop anywhere here? It, it's served. Yes. There's a bus uh, station nearby. I don't have that location. Well, this is critical in terms of planning this, yeah. in terms of seeker review, and the town should be looking at it very carefully. Um, and in some, I've done some research on the, um, the next <clears throat> um, the housing policy guide, zoning and affordable housing, and they talk a lot about parking. And they talk about the fact that if you follow a municipality's parking guidelines, and is ours one per one bedroom? Uh, probably one and a half. For a one bedroom, okay. then um, a large portion of the ground surface is taken up with parking. So they make uh, the, the recommendations in some of these reports is to adjust the parking requirements, which I guess you could do in a this is a special zone, or secure a public bus route with a transit authority, mm -hmm. or have a shuttle bus, have a shuttle service, because you're putting something that really is not in walking distance. And if you're talking about disabilities, people are not gonna walk into Southampton Village. And what would they buy in Southampton Village? You know, they want a market, supermarket. So it's, those are the kinds of issues that really need to be thought out and worked out in this plan. Um, That's good. No, we'll definitely put that in public transportation. You know, I mean, I don't know whether there's a bus route. There's no bus route on 27, right? On, on County Road 39. Oh, there, there is. is. There is. Whether where the stop is right here, I know it's on the other side by um um we the road that goes off Sandy Hollow. I know that's where the bus stop is there on that side, but I don't know where it is on this side. Right, but you take your hands trying to get over there, right? You would, yeah. Well, it I might mean, be in front of the church. It might. It no. might be close to the church, yeah. Well, something in front of the, some arrangement with the church, I think you could work out. And if you're not gonna segment the seeker review, then it would pay to look at that, that property and get a piece of it or 
Where these is the liquor store right next to it, the beverage store to the west? Is that the immediate uh, building? I'm sorry. Is the building to the immediate west of the church the beverage store? I, I believe it is, actually. Yeah. Um, if it's not to the immediate left, it might be one parcel down. Well, I think it's the beverage store and then the Dunkin' Donuts mm -hmm. and the gas station. I've got to see these, yeah. the east. Going east, yeah. Yeah. And so I think in a way you've kind of, the concept is terrific. We certainly need affordable housing units, but it's like a very detached hunk of land. Mm -hmm. Right. And you need, and you know, in all kinds of affordable housing developments, they talk about access, access to downtowns, access for mobility, access to public transportation. And this is really devoid of that unless you can make some major changes in okay. um, transit authority to get them to speak. I remember, was it Stop and Shop? I remember Janice working really hard to get the, was it the Suffolk County bus system to come into Stop and Shop to pick up people and drop people off? Yep. That's the kind of creative thinking that I think the town board needs to uh, inject into this mm -hmm. otherwise you're going to have poor people stuck with no way if they're non-drivers what are they going to do and even if they are i mean it's it, it's a tough place to shop in any any of those stores along there and, and to live there and have to um use that that mm -hmm. major road to get in and out mm -hmm. may i ask a question about planning and the secret review um, we have this portion, then you have the church portion. And Gloria, what were you alluding to that there is an, another area that's- no, I, was, I was just questioning if the church is not gonna stay the church, that maybe we should be looking at both parcels because depending upon what the, what the church is gonna turn into may have a huge impact but on what we're seeing now. Excuse me, Gloria, you had mentioned something about a swimming pool being put in. Oh, that's, there's a swimming, there's, there, there's a group of people that are trying to build a swimming pool. And right now they're looking at this, at the CPF property um, on the McGee Street, south of the gas station to okay. build. And so I, I was commenting that if that actually does happen, that's tra added traffic onto McGee Street and now we're suggesting that this So I would say that we shouldn't have, so what I'm suggesting is that any secret review should have in consideration any other planning developments for that area, including the church. Mm -hmm. I would hate to- Well, that's what we said, Robin, no segmented, no, segmented. no segmented review. I mean, you can't do that in secret anyway. It's, it's a violation of the secret process. No, Robin's point is good because um, especially when you do a traffic study, you want to know if there's going to be other things that are going to be putting stress on well, we those. That. We, that did that with the, we did that with the Bridgehampton Commons, if you remember. Correct. Yeah. But you I'm, can't isolate these things. But I'm just recommending to the town board that oh. their secret review should include an analysis of any other planning in the area yes. and include that in, in terms of traffic. And I think Lorian brought up an excellent point. Okay. Yeah, that, that's why I, I mentioned it. Thank so you. That that we we keep segmenting these applications and exponentially when you put them all together, they don't work Correct. track wise. Great. No, it's good. Okay. Could you just explain to me there was um, Michelangelo? You said sure. in the beginning. There seems to be some hybrid on affordability. Could, I was very confused as we, what is the hybrid that you're using for affordability? These are gonna be all rental units, am I correct? Uh, they are going to be all rental units. I'm not, the hybrid comment, uh, what do you mean by that? I you said that it wasn't going just by the regular affordability, that there was going to be other well, it's iterations. It's just the 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 veterans and the disabled. It's still one hundred percent affordable. 
we would be using 330-8 to increase the yield because they're a nonprofit. Um, but that, that's the, I guess the high, I would call it a hybrid in, it, in any way. Okay. There's a portion of it uh, would be preference and but we'll have to look at that, that preference portion regarding the fair housing law yeah. um, for veterans and, and disabled. Okay. So um, are you gonna work up this, um, is this a referral? From the planning board, can we see it? It? Isn't. it isn't. What Mike is doing with our guidance is he's he's preparing the uh, part two and part three for the board and the town board. Um, their action is actually next week um, on the project, and um, is it next week? I'm sorry. June eighth. June eighth. So in two weeks. Two weeks. Um, but uh, he will incorporate all your comments as significant issues related to this property. And you're recommending that this is a significant issues for this development, correct? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. Claire, you, you can see for you, as a professional planner, this violates some core planning tenets of a planning principle, namely access, even for yeah. emergency vehicles, down, don't okay. shoot from a, you know, <laughs> Yeah, emergency vehicles. Yep, definitely. They send us to these planning courses, and then you know, then we come back with the knowledge, and then <laughs> they just. I know. Um, yeah, and then I know um, we're in a tough position because there are a lot of political considerations, you know. And, but um, we we don't, we're not constrained by that. I mean, we have to tell them that this is a bad plan. <laughs> mm -hmm. And 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 if they it, you know if you want to make it our words or even my words. Put my name on it. This is a terrible. Well, I think I think laid out. I agree with you. You can add mine. Um, yeah. I mean, the whole concept of affordability is something that we've been focused on, and the town board is being pressured to do. But you can't just plunk something down in the middle of a highly trafficked intersection and expect it to function the way you want to just because you have the land here. You know. Um, I mean, maybe you need to look at the front piece and maybe you can get a more space and space it out and then do a hookup into Seasons Lane. And I mean, I think that there are some alternative plans here yeah. that need to be recommended to the developer. Right. And I think you brought up an excellent, another excellent point is some cooperation with the county in terms of public transportation. Mm -hmm. Of course, if you're going to try to put here people who need to get to work or people with disabilities, you have to offer some kind of public transportation. Right. So I think you need cooperation with the county on this. Okay. I think that's a good point. So if you can get some of these recommendations that we're making to us so that we have <coughs> them, because if this is coming back to us, we want to be able to track what it is that we've said and recommended. Okay. I mean, how, how now is the town planning? Are they, is this an, some kind of an expedited push or what? Oh no, but we have secret timelines. So there, um, as I said, Michelangelo with our guidance is going to prepare the documents. Um, and as I said, you're recommending a significant impact be, be acknowledged here. And any other comments you've made, noise, lighting, that's all good. We're all gonna put that in there also. Um, but it's traffic, <laughs> it's access, it's egress, it's basic, basic, as Dennis said, it's planning 101. Right. 101. Yep. You know? Mm -hmm. And then people look at us and then they look at the town and say, what were you thinking of? <laughs> Why did you do that? It's, I mean, it comes down to safety. You know, well, it's, it's, it's not good planning is what yeah. it is. I mean, it's also lousy uh, quality of life for the people that are going to live there. Mm -hmm. I mean, quite frankly, it, it might be affordable, but affordable with what? So you can you can't get get out and there's nothing around you. you I guess you can walk to Dunkin Donuts to get a donut and a, and a slice of pizza. <laughs> You know, in their report, in uh, um, Concern for, for Living, in their report, they give you the mileage to 
the supermarket, to the post office, whatever. But they're not walkable distances for people who are disabled or who might be impaired veterans. You know, there, there's a sort of a, a lapse or break in logic here. But even if you're healthy, what are you going to walk on? Right. We don't know about connecting sidewalks or pedestrian. And then, and then long-term long planning. I think that a traffic circle in this area has to be has to be addressed because then you can make a right-hand turn to a left-hand turn, get out, you know, it creates traffic flow. Right. But nothing gets done. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't understand why it doesn't, why doesn't it get done? That's a great question. I'll go on my tombstone. <laughs> Let's hope not. You're yeah, I don't know. Why did nothing get done? Well, to your tombstone is like decades away. Well, that, that's how pessimistic he is. <laughs> well, it takes, I tell you what it takes. In my view, in my experience on this board, there needs to be a committee formed from someone from the town, someone from the village, someone from the county, and someone from the state, a transportation group to sort of thrash out these problems because you're dealing with intermunicipal agencies. Mm -hmm. And it's all over town. Which it's is why I said that if you're not going to get the cooperation of the county now to start looking at the transportation going in and out of that, you're missing a point of it. So right. bifurcation is not just in the planning of one segment to another, it's also how the the different layer, layers of government are gonna to work together to make this workable. Right. So there's two levels to the bifurcation. One is in the planning and one is in the interrelationship of the governmental agencies. Right, mm -hmm. including the village because yes. they Absolutely. are impacted by this. And we received a letter saying to please keep them in the loop. Uh, I guess they were not. Um, they received an EAF as an involved. Uh, they may have been designated as an interested agency, but, or no, they received, they received as an involved agency. They're an involved agency. Yeah. yeah. But we're involved and they're involved. So they actually have the same level of uh, authority. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, I think you, got, think you got an, an earful. Um, Thank you. Okay. No, we were, we were hoping for this. You hear that earful. I'm going to send you, Michelangelo and Claire, these reports that I printed out. They're extremely, extremely valuable. Excellent. Thank, Thank you so much. That'd be great. Thanks, Mike. Madam right, Chair, right. if I may, um, there, yes, was a, there was a request to speak, and I just wanted to reiterate that this is um, a public a work session discussion um, of the planning board, and, and thus no public comment is taken at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we want to close out of the um, afternoon, uh, afternoon work session and go into the regular meeting session. Do I need a motion for that? I don't need, do I need a motion? No. Um, so we're going right to number two. That's Claire, uh, JB Properties. Um, who needs to come in? This is just an extension on a pre-submission. I don't know if anyone is there, but Claire is not there. So just to repeat, number three is off the agenda, number eight is off the agenda, and number 21 is off the agenda. Uh, sorry, number two. It's a sorry. Claire, you're number, number two, yeah. Yes. Go ahead. So that's an extension of a pre-submission conference report that you adopted a year ago, and this would be extension for one year. The applicant is uh, getting the application together and expects to submit it shortly. So can you give us a date? One year means to May, May 14th, 2022. May 14, 2022. Can I have a motion? Motion. Motion, motion by Zuccarelli, second by okay. all in favor. Right. Opposed extension, six in favor. What, what dealership is this? Uh, Lexus. Thank you. Okay, um, number four. Matthew? On to number four. Another ex number extension, BH680 yeah. LLC. Yeah, another extension. This is a two lot subdivision. 
Um, if the board recalls, this involves the creation of an undersized lot. This is on Scuttle Hall Road and Cooks Lane, where they're going to be landmarking this oh, house. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, I've been told by the applicants that they have received their variance from the CBA. Uh, they're currently at the health department, so they're just requesting that their um, pre-application report gets extended for one year, which is the customary time period. So that'll be from May 28th, 2021 to May 28th, 2022. Can, can I ask a question on these extensions where there's reports that are, are there an automatic updating of any of the sections of these reports as process or do we wait the year and then review them and decide what has to be updated? If nothing has changed. There's usually you know, in, in the resolution <clears throat> that, you know, everything in terms of zoning has remained the same on the property. The project, you know, remains in conformance. So it gets uh, extended. I'm just thinking about sometimes neighborhoods change. Yeah. So what was a project on a street that had no action is now a year from now or two years from the inception of the project, now on a busy street where there's been three other things happening. Yeah, I think that that, that would we would definitely bring it back to if that was the case, if, if there was some kind of major change um, to the area or the zoning or there's a new local law. Um, we would have to bring it back to the board for sure. And we have very often a pub another public hearing. Public hearing, correct, yeah. Okay, so there is a process where yeah. we review these when they come back a year later to see if they need- Yes, to make sure there's been no major changes, okay. for sure. And I have a motion to accept this extension by Gloria and second by Dennis, all in favor? Aye. Six in favor. Number five, Matthew Bideway. By the way, this is on for discussion purposes only. And uh, Charles, if you can let in John Armentano, please. I actually don't see him. He was. Uh, okay, I do now. Got him? Okay. Yeah. I'll bring it up on the screen. You got it. Give He's you in. Introduction. Okay. All right. So if you recall last year in the height of the pandemic, we received a subdivision application for a three lot subdivision of the Bideway property in West Hampton. At the time they were initially, you know, seeking to retain the front two lots where the third lot in the back was going to be purchased by the town uh, via CPF. Um, it was incomplete. You know, there was the question of the central Pine Barrens. Uh, whether this was development or not, et cetera. So I, you know, sort of behind the scenes while this has been incomplete, I've been working with the applicant, with Janice, with Claire, Kathleen, also with uh, the Central Pine Barrens Commission. So we have received some revised plans, um, which I'll pull up for you. Uh, that's going to be, this is changing to a two lot subdivision. Um, what you see here, I know it's a little small. But so where the Bideway property is going to be the front lot, about 34 acres, and then the town is going to purchase via CPF the back lot, uh, which is 111 acres uh, for preservation purposes. I mean, and the purpose today is just to discuss, you know, if the board's comfortable with processing this via the 292-44B1 waiver, uh, which allows essentially the subdivision review process to be waived in its entirety when the uh, subdivision is to foment uh, land preservation. Um, and I have John here, if you have any questions for him um, or any questions for me, um, I'd be happy to answer them for you. So the code is to waive the subdivision review when part of the parcel is being preserved. Yeah, when one of the parcels is being preserved. I did include the, uh, the section here. Uh, the waiver provision is down here. Uh, so it's B1 um, when it's you know, donated or acquired by the town, county, state, federal government or qualified nonprofit. Um, so this is, I mean, it's a good thing, 111 acres that are going to be, you know, it's mostly in the core preservation area, some of it's in the compatible growth, but it's going to be, you know, preserved in its entirety. But the developable portion. Correct. Will be, will be retained by, by the way, the 34 acres. Right. That is, that is, it's good afternoon, Madam Chairwoman, John yeah. Armitano from Fire Fridge. Uh, that's basically, you know, we are selling the woods to the town and retaining the active areas of Bideway. And that think we think that's a perfect uh, perfect use. We're not, we, there's no plans to 
use the rear portion. It's a rather large piece of land. And by the way, it's going to continue its operations as it has for decades on the site that it's always operated on. Okay, you're not moving the line at all. Uh, it's as you see it. Okay. Well, any, any comments from the board? Any discussion? All right, so if, if everyone's comfortable, I'll bring it back at the next meeting. So that'll be June 10th. I just want to you know, fine tune through the map to make sure everything's noted on here and we'll bring, a, uh, bring it back for an approval. Okay. Obviously they're still subject to any outside agency approval such as the health department or central pine barren. So we're not losing that in this process, but okay. this is just to waive the, the town's process. Okay, great. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you, Mr. Carmentano. Yes, thank you. Have a good day. There's Matthew no number six, middle line highway is a site disturbance. Yes, back to the share. Matthew, if I may interject. Absolutely. Um, because I'm a little annoyed with this Absolutely. property. Um, <laughs> for, the, for the rest of the board, this happens to be around the corner for me. Um, the applicant came in a while ago saying, can I get permission to overclear because I want to build this big house with lots of stuff. That is correct, Lauren. And he said, no, Re reconfigure your plans. Correct, which they did. And it seems to have been overcleared anyway. So they were, you know, subject to a fee double, which is, you know, part of our, you know, policy starting this year. And it's know, not, it's not enough. It's very frustrating. And I, yeah. <laughs> I'm on the same page as you on that. I mean, they what, have, they what have, is the fine? Is the fine, how much is the fine? It's not, it's not, so if you're, if you're overcleared, um, it's, you know, the initial application fee is $1,600. If you're, you know, if it's found to be essentially part of construction as, as work done sort of thing, it's the, they're subject to having the fee doubled, which is $3,200. Well, I think the town should look at, as, as yeah. other municipalities have, either you're restricted from developing for a certain period of time, like a year or two years, yeah. or the fees have to be greatly increased because yeah. that's a slap on the wrist to someone and you can't replace those Correct. No, that vegetation. It's, not, it's never yeah. going to be the same. It's, it's a million country. dollar house, so yeah. thirty two hundred dollars is rounding error. No. I just had to say it. No. You're... Yeah. So he's going to. He's looking for. He's not going to be able to get his C of O until until this is all done. He's about sixty five hundred square feet over. He is putting in you know seventy trees, uh, low bush blueberry, high bush blueberry, which you see on this list. Um, He's going to re -vegetate, re -vegetating basically around the outside where he, where it's been over cleared. Can, can um, still subject. Go ahead. Is there anything that asks for equivalency in terms of what he's taken out to put back in? Uh, he's got, I mean, we have, we have standards uh, that we give people, um, you know, in terms of what the coverage should be, you know, it's usually about 60% um, canopy, 40% understory. We have spacing guidelines. We have size guidelines. You know, it's got to be trees. It's got to be bushes. It's got to be, you know, lower plants, grass and stuff. Um, so there's some kind of attempt at equivalency. Correct. I mean, that if you pull out trees that were... If you're pulling out trees, you got to put trees back. Obviously, they're not going to be the same that? size. But, you know, because you... What, can, what caliper do you usually require? Uh, two and a half to three inch. That's nothing. That's not, you see, that's, that's what I'm talking about in terms yeah. of equivalency. If yeah. you had to spend the money to replace trees that have, that are five, six foot or whatever. Yeah, I mean, we're talking would, about, you know, potentially 50 feet, 50 foot trees or, or higher. I mean, we're taking I'd out. be happy to just, you know, discuss maybe with Claire and Janice and with Marty about upping the sizes, but Please. in terms yeah. of, about, I know it can get, I'm not, it can get hard in purchasing, well, then you think of not pulling them out. Yeah, exactly. You see if there's an equivalency, if yeah. there's a punishment that's equivalent or a penalty, I shouldn't mm -hmm. say punishment, a penalty that exactly. shows some type of equivalency. But if you can pay $100 for a little tree, you pull out the big tree, yeah. and now you've satisfied it with a $100 little tree. But if you would have to put in a $2,000 tree mm -hmm. for it, you might start to think about it. So I think there should be some equivalency or an attempt at equivalency or at least an upping of the standard 
that where you've overcleared that you have to revegetate at least to some standard. I like the equivalent equivalency because that that makes sense. You know, it's replacing something with two inch, three inch caliper trees. It's a spindle. I don't know what was on the land before, so yeah, um, they're mature up trees. Can you can you bring that to Janice, please? Yeah, no, we'll we'll I'll certainly discuss it. Yes, I'll, definitely. Okay, good. That's an easy thing to. Equivalency, might, equivalency or close to equivalency might stop this this because it's it it'll make it economically <laughs> infeasible, you know, unfeasible, infeasible. <laughs> Sorry. <Yeah. You> <laughs> Yeah, so uh, okay, so um, looking for a pr conditional approval on this as well with all those new your standards. Plan, your plan is um, okay. Do I have a vote on this? Can you can you stop sharing your screen so I can see the board? Right. Yeah. Thank you. Can I have a, a? It's a motion to approve by Zuccarelli, second by Dennis. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Six in favor. And the house has already been sold. Yeah. Can you please, um, Matthew, report back to us about your conversation? Because what happens, I know I've been noticing, is that we make suggestions, we think hard, we work hard, and then it goes into... Not yeah. a problem. I can certainly bring it back. But that's a very good point that Robin yeah. brought up. Okay, Claire, you have uh, Bruchampton Commons and the signs. If you could, uh, I guess InterScience should come back on. There, that's the crew. Um, so the ARB has worked really hard with the applicants to consider the master sign plan that was submitted. You had uh, submitted to the ARB the master sign plan, which um, recommended the smaller units under 8,000 square feet be considered as part of the master sign plan if they had a logo less than 25 25% of the sign. The ARB thought about that and they said that they would um, have that part of the master sign plan if there was no logo because they were worried about the, even if it's 25% of the sign, they were worried about it's looking perspective with the lettering. Like a, a logo could be bigger and the lettering could be smaller and it would just look out of proportion. So um, that was the conclusion on the master sign plan. Um, so they wanted ARB review of the logo. Um, and then also they went through all the signage, the, even the ones with the logos, the smaller and then the bigger signs with and without the logos and they approved or they approved with some changes. Um, so the applicants here now I wanted that input from the ARB before recommending any CICRA determination. Um, now with that input, I'm recommending um, modification of the master sign plan so that at least there's ARB approval, whether it's ARB approval or planning board approval with a logo or not, that's up to you. Um, having the modification to that master sign plan and then um, issuing that deck. And I think you wanted a public hearing on the changes to the signs. So, that's where we're at and the applicants are funded. Right. I like the ARB's recommendation, you know, that we should see it. So I think we should go along with that, but we should both be um, boards that look at it. And just, uh, just as an aside, Tim, we received your email and you were right. It was a cut and paste error for most of those signs. So she's adjusting it and you'll get a new version uh, with your changes, and then the rest of it can be reviewed. Okay, just, sure. thank, thank you. just so we're clear, this is Timothy McCulley, 41 Meeting House Lane at Southampton for the applicant. Just so we're clear, we went through every sign. They were very accommodating, and I commend them for that. Um, two logos that they didn't, uh, they wanted reduced a little bit. One was the Petco. And the other one, they thought that maybe the globe on uh, at and was a little too big. They wanted it to be more in conformity with the lettering, which we agreed to do. Um, the Kmart sign was had the lighting overhanging it. They didn't want that, so we, re, we, we dropped that down. And then they were concerned about the way we were projecting the signs for, K, I mean, for TJ Maxx and Marshalls. 
and they wanted to be sure that they were going to be uniform and consistent in the size. And that we, we, that's all I believe it may have already been sent to the chairman. And the board's position was if that was submitted to the chairman and, and he was uh, okay with it, then these would be approved and not formed. Who's the chairman? Mike Sharia. Mike Sharia. Mike Sharia. Mike Sharia. So uh, that's where we're at. Um, I, this is a recommendation for a negative declaration and to schedule a public hearing. Why do we have to have a public hearing? Because it's what, a public what, hearing. What are, we, what are we gonna gain from the public hearing? I mean, you, you have your thoughts and somebody in the public might have their thoughts, but are we gonna get whipsawed back and forth? This is never ending. Meanwhile, Amazon's building their building in West Hampton. Pretty soon you can do your shopping in the pajamas. We really need to get this moved forward. Not a, I don't mind having a public hearing. I've had plenty in my life, but it should, there should be some, something of concern to the public that requires the public hearing. Well, this is a highly visible shopping center, major to the various communities surrounding it. So I do think that a public hearing, it's all been resolved anyway. So let's do a public hearing and then we'll move forward. We're neg decking it and having a public hearing. Okay. You've already got your determination. Okay. One other thing you were talking about the last time about <clears throat> the signs for the larger 8,000 square feet uh, uh, tenants. And Claire had indicated to us and asked us to take out everything in our master plan about that. But I think we should consider leaving at least some of that stuff in. So when a tenant is looking at a sign, they have a parameter that they know they have to meet instead of somebody coming to you with something that's not gonna be approved or is gonna be a controversy. And then you wanna have another public hearing and on and on it goes and you never get the tenants in there. So maybe we don't have everything that we proposed, but we should have some kind of parameters only for yourselves. Well, I think we do. I think we do have, right? We have signed guidelines for the master plan. So if they follow those, we'll see yeah, it. But that, but the 8,000 8, square feet ones were, yep. were completely taken out. And what I'm suggesting is we should have those parameters that we know of today. But in the end, we've already agreed that ultimately it's your decision and the ARB's decision, comments to you to make a decision on any sign over 8,000 square foot tenant. Claire, is that? Sure, is we, that could have, we could have got, I mean, it's tough, the word is guidelines, but we could have um, standards for yeah, the yeah. admin process, which would go to, um, you know, okay. just the building department, and then you could have guidelines for the remaining signs. Sure. Okay. That's all I'm asking. And let, let us go back and revisit it so that at the public hearing, it's, it's there for everybody to comment on. We could do that. Okay. So you, do you, um, we only have one, this is the only item to be scheduled for June 24th. I'm not quite sure. Um, the timing for the board and you do you need time to review to get to that master plan together with the guidelines for june 24th i think so so we'll schedule it for june 24th how many are on that night just one other Zero. Zero. this is the first one no so if we so this would be the only do you have others to schedule for that night no this is the only one no. That's what I'm saying. If you made it for July 8th, and I know that's, he doesn't want to delay yeah. anymore. I don't want to suggest that. Yeah, the problem is I'm not going to be here on July 8th. Okay. Okay, so um, you'll get me that master plan with the guideline. And yeah, we'll get it ahead of time for you, but at least a week ahead of the meeting. Okay. Um, I, I kind of want to get that back to the ARB. I know that sounds terrible that you're going back, but I just want to make sure, or maybe I'll just give it to the chair and ask him his opinion about it. How's that sound? Yeah, they've been very really involved to this point, so I think that they need to stay involved. So what, what, what do you want to bring back to the... 
the guidelines, yeah. the guidelines for the signs for a double check. Oh, okay, that's fine. They, yeah, they, you know, they're they're involved with. They have to see the final product. Okay, good. And, well, and I'm sure they'll they're able to weigh in at the public hearing as well and put their comments in, like everybody does. Yes, so referral back to them. Okay, okay. great. Okay, so um, if the board wants to consider this action, it's a CICRA uh, negative declaration and scheduled in public hearing for June 24th. I have a motion for that. Motion. motion by Glorian, second by Robin. All in favor? Aye. Opposed, abstentions, six in favor. Thank you. Thank you, Thank very, you very much. You. Have a nice weekend. Thank you. Number eight is off. We're back to you, Matthew, number nine. Number nine. Charles, if you can let in uh, Brian Lacasio, please. On his way. Uh, for two signs, at one each at flying point one and flying point two. Uh, if you remember back in 2016, uh, the planning board approved a site plan. You know, one for this is flying point one and flying point two. Uh, a condition of approval is that the you know, planning board had to review and approval of all signage. Uh, so the applicant is proposing, proposing two freestanding signs, one on each property. Uh, the first uh, for flying point one is a V-shaped monument sign, as you see here, uh, stainless steel uh, in a blue color, which is noted on the top. And also, a this will be on flying point two, a freestanding directory sign that's just going to identify the businesses that are within the, the property. Uh, downward facing lighting on this, which is indicated. And is that can, just a band, a band of light, a neon? What, what kind of? Uh, it's, a, it's an LED light bar, as far as I can see. Uh, it does indicate <coughs> that I have a condition of approval that's got to be shielded in downward facing, Jackie, mm -hmm. and the correct color temperature. Um, I know it's very small. Uh, this is the location of the V-shaped monument sign on the corner. Proper setbacks? Yep, 20 feet, 20 from, feet. Each, from each corner, and then the freestanding money, uh, freestanding I, um, other sign is here. Okay, it's similar to the one in Bridgehampton. It's Correct, it's similar to Farrell's uh, sign. Right. At so they need to give you a PMS color on the blue. Which they do. Oh, it's indicated yeah. on, the top of, okay. on the top of the plan. Um, so pretty standard, just mm -hmm. identifies the signs that you see. Uh, the ARB did see this on uh, May 18th and they indicated their approval, just the one condition on here uh, about the lighting, mm -hmm. 3,000 Kelvin or less. I don't know if you had any questions for Brian Lacasio. Any questions, anybody? No, I think <coughs> not. So we have a motion to approve the uh, signage. Motion. Motion by Robin, second by Gloria and all in favor. Aye. Opposed abstention, six in favor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Anthony, 911 Flanders. Yep. Um, so the board may recall we had a, um, well, a robust discussion at the last meeting about the pre-submission conference report uh, for this property at the traffic circle in Riverside for a gasoline uh, fueling station uh, and a 3,024 square foot 7-Eleven uh, convenience store. Uh, we went through the pre-application report in detail. The applicant uh, provided their comments to us, which were forwarded to the board, and we discussed it that day. Um, I've made some um, revisions to the report, which I've sent to the board. I also sent it to the applicant. Uh, and I'm just going to quickly go through it uh, because we it, a lot of it really hasn't changed. Um, so mm -hmm. um, I, we'll just go through it. Um, Anthony, on my screen, I'm only getting about a third of the right-hand side of the document. How's that? No, still the same. What about for everybody else? We can see it. It's fine. 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 I can't see it. You can move it. It, it, I would, it wouldn't let me move. Because I can move mine back and forth. Why am I using my mouse? We're seeing full screen. Yeah, I have it on full screen. It's moving now. Thank you, John. Okay. So let's just go through um, the comments again that we have here. Um, everybody knows about the, the project. We discussed it in detail. So um, the applicant here? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Um, Anthony Curcio will be here, I believe. 
um, uh, Keith Brown, I believe, uh, maybe Jeff Murphy. Um, yes, we're here on the call, Madam Chair, Mr. Trezor. Okay, good, 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 good. Um, all right, so let's just go through the comments again. The, uh, the first one uh, refers to um, the potential uh, ZBA variances or, and or determinations that may be needed for this project. Um, but I'll be very clear, it says here, which should be confirmed with the division of building and zoning. With the, uh, for the applicant last time, if they are entitled to any pre-existing uh, setbacks, I don't have any issues with that. Uh, Dennis O'Rourke will give them a letter to that effect and they'll submit it with their final uh, application. But needless to say, um, that'll happen when it happens. So it's, you know, the, the, the zoning issue remains in here. But in any case, uh, the first um, issue is the uh, determination the ZBA must made as whether or not this proposal or this proposed uh, 7-Eleven convenience store qualifies uh, as an accessory use to the gasoline filling station uh, since a convenience store is not permitted in, as a principal use in the highway business zoning district. So uh, that's the first point. Uh, with that, uh, Excuse me, Anthony, you're reading the planning review issues, right? I'm starting on page. Yep, three. yep, on page, uh, page, yeah, page three, one A. Good. Good. Just want to make sure where you were. Good. Um, and it, in making that determination, uh, the ZBA may consider and measure against, um, as it says here, uh, the principal use, the floor area devoted to said use, the economic importance of the use, the number of customers and visitors. Uh, the big one, the gross sales receipts um, uh, versus the fuel, number of employees, et cetera, um, that will be used to make this determination, which, as we know, lies uh, squarely with the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, in addition, the Planning Board's uh, comment was that this uh, building size uh, seems to exceed uh, the square footage of similar accessory uses that were approved by the ZBA and this board. Um, and they range. Uh, it's very dependent on the, the application and obviously what the applicant submits to the ZBA, but they range from roughly uh, 600 square foot to 1,500 square feet. I mentioned last time the applicant represented the BOLA application. The planning board raised the issue about the 2,000 square foot building and it was reduced to 1,200 square feet. Uh, the issue of size of building um, is uh, always been uh, an issue for the planning board and it's been raised in every single uh, report that we've prepared on these projects, every single one of them. Um, in the event that the store is not deemed to be accessory to the gas station, then it would require a use variance from the ZBA. Um, the other point that we make in here and the planning board just notes this, um, the ZBA upheld, as we know, uh, a chief building inspector's determination back in 2010 that a proposed 7-Eleven convenience store located within the HB zoning district was uh, classified as a grocery store and thus not permitted um, in that district and thus requiring a use variance. Um, whether it's, you know, as the applicant said last time, particularly relevant here, uh, they could have that discussion with the ZBA, but it is worth pointing out. Um, the second point about the two uses on the property and the lot size, um, again, a 40,000 square foot uh, requirement for a, um, a gas station and the property is slightly less than that, but they do have a pre-existing gasoline station on there. Uh, so if they're entitled to that size uh, property, then, then the building inspector would make that determination. Uh, but then um, if uh, depending on a ZBA determination, if it's the, the convenience store is not deemed to be accessory, uh, a second use requires an additional 20,000 square feet of, of land area. Um, here we're talking about the relief for the building to be located 10 feet from the rear property line where 50 feet is required. Uh, the dumpster 14.2 feet from the street where 100 feet is required. This was a big issue for me. Uh, we don't approve dumpsters sitting on the road. Um, relief uh, for the canopy setbacks of 30.6 feet. Um, and relief for the fuel dispenser at 39.8 feet. Um, relief for another fuel dispenser to be located 49.1 feet. Uh, and again, uh, if these are pre-existing setbacks that the applicant's entitled to, they, they could get determination from the building department. Uh, they need relief to allow 30 parking spaces where 36 is the minimum required. Uh, and they also require relief to allow three canopy signs uh, where no such signs are permitted. Uh, the second comment is that the planning board does not support any relief at this time until uh, the project has been modified to address the use zoning and site plan issues addressed here. Uh, the third uh, pertains to the CICRA. 
Um, this is an unlisted action. Uh, as we discussed last time, we're going to recommend or we're going to have a coordinated review with all involved agencies. Um, and we're going to, uh, the planning board is going to ask to be lead agency on the project when we get to that point. Um, also, the applicant submitted a traffic assessment report um, with this, which we will get obviously more into when we do the full uh, environmental assessment here. Uh, but we may have to get a traffic consultant uh, to assist in this regard. Um, the, the traffic conditions at the traffic circle obviously are very unique and we may need to get a traffic consultant to review what's prepared. Uh, some of the preliminary comments that we made, the first one was about the manual traffic counts and when we were, they were taken. Um, we usually ask for uh, traffic counts taken during the peak summer and season, uh, the peak summer season and during the peak travel times. Uh, that's been the standard. Um, the traffic study must include uh, a comprehensive parking access and circulation analysis, including the use of the site by large uh, landscaping or construction trucks, uh, as well as delivery trucks. Uh, again, we're at the circle uh, and it's extremely uh, difficult uh, to maneuver around there given the traffic conditions. Um, and then the other point was uh, the parking analysis that was done. It was based on uh, the South Hold or a 7-Eleven in South Hold, uh, which the applicant uh, indicated also had 30 parking spaces. Uh, but uh, we just don't find that that's a persuasive comparison. Uh, the 7-Eleven South Hold lacks a gasoline station. Uh, they don't have the year round or the daily commuting populations that this town uh, has. Uh, and its location at the traffic circle is unique. Um, when compared to the one that they use. So uh, I just don't think it's, it's, it's an appropriate uh, comparison. Uh, the fourth point uh, pertains to an environmental assessment or audit uh, because of the property's previous use as a gasoline filling station and service station, the potential uh, uh, impacts as a result of uh, underground contamination need to be evaluated. Um, the fifth point was about the Riverside Overlay District. Um, and the um, uh, and the standards that exist within it. Um, so the planning board is urging the applicant to contemplate that developing the site in accordance with the R01 zoning district, uh, which promotes pedestrian oriented development uh, rather than uh, automotive customer base, uh, such as a gas station or convenience. Uh, the sixth point uh, talks about the uh, dumpster setback, which the planning board does not support at 14.2 feet. It should be located closer to the building. Uh, I get they're not going to be able to meet the 100 foot setback requirement, but um, it's, it's gotta go closer to the building. Um, the seventh point talks about the parking variances. Um, you know, I, we're, we're asking for a lot of relief on this. Um, it's six parking spaces, uh, it's a high turnover, a type of use with a gas station and a, and a, and a uh, 7-Eleven convenience store. Um, so, uh, you know, any parking relief has to be seriously uh, reviewed. Uh, I'm going to have to look at the traffic and parking analysis carefully uh, when we get to that point. Uh, but but the, we question the, the, the parking relief at this time, given the heavy uh, demand that may be associated with the uses. Uh, the architectural style of the building, again, it's... Um, we, we want to see it more um, uh, residential design, uh, very similar to the one that was done on the corner of Cypress and Flanders. Uh, the ninth point talks about the canopy and the parking in the front um, and the convenience store in the rear, which is sort of opposite how we'd like to do it. Uh, again, if there's any engineering issues, you know, we'll look at it, but the alternatives should at least be examined. Uh, the canopy designed also uh, needs to be addressed. We prefer pitch roofs, uh, natural materials, and uh, the structure to be physically connected to the building. Um, the canopy signs, the applicant's proposing three of them. Uh, this is a, another point uh, that the canopy signs aren't permitted in the code. They're asking for three of them. Uh, zero canopy signs are, are, are are recommended. Uh, they're, they're proposing a building sign. They're proposing a freestanding sign that's going to say 7-Eleven or whatever. Um, and so three 7-Eleven signs on a canopy are just not necessary. Uh, the 12th point talks about the highway business zoning district and the special exception criteria. And we raised a few points last time about uh, some of those criteria that we'll have to look at a little more closely. 
Uh, one talks about the plot area sufficient, appropriate, and adequate for the use. Uh, and again, uh, when we look at the secret and the traffic and the parking and everything else, this, this, this could be an issue that, that we need to adequately assess. Uh, again, um, the, the second point, access facilities are adequate for the estimated traffic. Uh, again, it's at the traffic circle, so um, this, this could be an, an issue. Um, again, the lot area should not be less than 40,000. Again, um, that we have to look at as a special exception criteria. Uh, the thirteenth point is just talks about the overlay districts, uh, aquifer, and the archaeological sensitive area. Uh, the property has been uh, long uh, fully developed uh, with underground tanks and such uh, for decades. Uh, so uh, there are no clearing uh, restrictions, uh, and I don't believe an archaeological uh, study is required. Uh, we'll need a comprehensive lighting plan. Uh, we'll need proper elevations with color renderings uh, and uh, all mechanicals um, on the roof or on the ground shall be screened from adjacent roadways. Thank you. Okay. Any questions from the board on this? I have one question on the traffic. Should there be something noted that any traffic study should include, again, proposed changes and other projects that are on this circle, because we have the Peconic uh, Paddler coming in, which would be very close nearby. And uh, I don't know if there's any other development proposed, but I think that projected um, traffic impacts of those proposals should be viewed or at least estimated into these. Robin, I will um, add that point to the traffic part. Uh, we'll, we'll, you know, that uh, 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 an assessment of other uh, projects in and around the area to look at the cumulative uh, impacts. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, could maybe, could Kathleen possibly update, just give us a brief overview of, of overlay districts and how they, um, I was under the inter you know, incorrect assumption that the underlying zone is what governs the, the, the uses and so forth, but overlay district uh, involves, especially when they're adopted, it, it entails uh, additional um, planning or sort of oversight of conditions, but that's not really the case, Kathleen, you were saying? That's correct, Dennis. Um, as, as the town board has legislated this overlay district, it's really meant to be an alternative. Um, it doesn't negate or take away the underlying zoning um, or the ability of an applicant to pursue the underlying zoning, um, notwithstanding that the board and the community would likely prefer uses as articulated in the overlay district, you are um, obligated to review it under the existing HB zoning district since that's what the applicant is asking for. Had the town board legislated it differently, um, then you know that would be a different story, but that's uh, not the case. Um, it likely was legislated this way because of the issues with the um, sewer district. Now, what about design guidelines as far as that we have full authority on for under aesthetics and design. Sure. So you're still governed by you know the on the three thirty dash one eighty four. You know your typical um, site plan guidelines. However, to the extent that the applicant is willing to um, adopt any of the RO site plan elements, or to the extent that some of them overlap, um, I can't tell you whether or not they overlap. It's likely that they could. <laughs> Um, then, you know, we can work with the applicant and see if that's a possibility. Okay, good. Okay, clear. Any other questions from the board? If not, uh, uh, Jeff, Mr. Brown. Uh, do you have some Thank comments? you, Madam Chairwoman. Yes, it's Keith, Keith Brown here. Can you hear me okay? Yes. yes. Okay, so uh, well, first off, I wanna thank the board and I wanna thank Mr. Trezor for that very thorough uh, comment memo. Um, we very much appreciate the fact that uh, Mr. Treza, um, that he has reviewed the comments that we had to the, um, to, or the responses to his comments, I should say, and that he took them um, to heart because there's been many revisions that uh, we agree with. And overall, um, we, we have no objection to the comments um, with respect to uh, the dumpster and some of the other uh, site modification issues we fully expect to revise the plan 
and to resubmit uh, at a later date, uh, you know, when we go to the Zoning Board of Appeals and we'll seek all necessary relief from, from the Zoning Board. And there was a question by Mr. Finnerty. I'm, I'm not sure I heard it correctly. It, it, it regarded the, uh, the effects of the overlay district with this uh, project. But Kathleen, Kathleen clarified pretty much my questions regarding that. Yeah, I think there's a question about the design standards. Yes. Under the one section of the code. Yeah. So uh, yes, whatever applicable design standards there are, you know, we intend to incorporate them into the project. Good. Thank you, Jeff. Do you have any com further comments? Uh, uh, actually, I was going to say as minimal as possible. Uh, hi, everybody. Jefferson Murphy for the record, Sag Harbor. Um, no, um, we really appreciate uh, your consideration of um, all the issues raised and um, we're ready to go forward. We want to make this as nice looking as project as we possibly can. Okay, thank you. So then I have a motion to approve this pre-submission report. Motion by Dennis, second by Zuccarelli. All in favor? Aye. Okay, six in favor. It is adopted. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. No problem. Um, all right. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chesa. You're quite welcome. I think you're sticking on for the next one. Yes, I am. Okay, good. Uh, so we have the same team, basically, um, I think, except for Jeff. But uh, this is the uh, certain solar. Um, this is the battery storage um, system greater than 600 kilo. Uh, 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 is it KVA? Yep, kilovolt uh, per hour. Um, this is Enterprise Zone Drive. Everybody knows where this is behind the credit union there uh, up in Flanders. Uh, this is an industrial subdivision. This is a site where the uh, facility is going. It's a special exception use in the LI-40 zoning district. Uh, this is the property here, this square. Um, all this dotted area is all uh, preserved vegetation uh, and the disturbance uh, would be limited uh, to this portion. I believe the disturbance is 35%, 50% uh, is uh, permitted. Uh, so the buffer that's uh, established is being fully maintained uh, as well as additional vegetation around here. Um, the, uh, we had a, a pre-submission conference on this and uh, we didn't get any public comments. Um, so I have a pre-submission conference report that we'll go over here. Um, just to go over real quick, the components of this, uh, include uh, the battery storage unit themselves. They sit at a height of 8.3 feet. Um, it includes uh, solar panels um, for a second phase, uh, which you know, I'll discuss in my report. Um, a total of 44 solar panels that will help generate some of the electricity to be stored and they'll sit at a maximum height of 10 feet. Um, that's actually going to be the highest structure uh, here is 10 feet. Uh, just so you know, the special exception criteria uh, set it at 20 feet, so we're under the uh, the height. Uh, four transformers at six feet, uh, switchgear units, two of them at eight feet, uh, and then the uh, chain link fence uh, uh, around the facility, which is one of the requirements uh, for the special exception criteria. Uh, so those are the components of the facility. Um, we looked at everything, and um, here are the uh, comments. Most of um, most of the, the board's comments that they had last time about, you know, either decommissioning or noise um, uh, come directly from the special exception criteria. There's a lot of special exception criteria. So uh, most of what I'm, I put in here comes directly from, from that, um, from that, uh, from those regulations. Um, all right. So the, the first point is that this is a, um, uh, uh, 600 um, kilowatt hours, it's over 600. So it's a special exception, as we said, and subject to the general and special standards. Um, <coughs> the second uh, point is that uh, solar is uh, not yet identified as a use uh, in the town's uh, table of industrial uses. Uh, so we don't have any specific regulations or guidelines at this point. Um, so this is anticipated as a second phase um, with the understanding that the town is actually uh, well into the process of adopting solar regulations. So I actually anticipate that by the time the formal application comes in, we may have some, some regs, we'll see. Uh, otherwise it would be a second phase to, to the project. 
Um, this is an unlisted action, I believe, under CICRA, um, as far as I was able to tell. Um, but I would uh, probably recommend an uncoordinated review in this case, um, as I don't think one would be necessary. Um, the fourth uh, point talks about mostly the special exception criteria that I think are just important to uh, point out. Um, one has to talk about the uh, diagram detailing uh, that is required, uh, about the system layout, the opponent, opponent, uh, components, uh, the electrical interconnection methods, so far, so forth. Um, equipment specifications uh, need to be provided. Uh, commissioning plans uh, need to be provided. Um, this is all directly from the special exception criteria. Uh, fire safety compliance uh, plan uh, needs to be submitted. Uh, an operation and maintenance manual uh, needs to be submitted. Uh, a lighting plan with details, I spell details wrong, uh, demonstrating compliance with the, the uh, lighting of the, the town, the, the town's lighting code has to be provided. Uh, noise, I know Craig mentioned something about noise last time. Um, uh, the, the, there are specific standards here that the applicant will have to demonstrate compliance with the um, one hour average noise generated from the facility. Uh, that it doesn't exceed uh, the noise standards for 235 3B of the code. Um, applicant also uh, should submit the manufacturer's uh, noise ratings and so forth uh, with the application. Um, the formal application shall include an emergency operations plan. Um, the formal application shall also include a decommissioning plan, which is required. Um, and uh, the applicant or owner or the operator of the facility will also have to um, um, uh, pay into the decommissioning fund. Um, just so the board is aware, um, the applicant uh, asked uh, the question about uh, whether it was going to be an escrow account or a bond. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, Claire and I discussed this. Uh, we don't really have the details of the decommissioning fund at this point. Um, this is actually the first application. So, um, so when we get a formal application, I'll, I'll look into this and we'll see what the, the payment method is, uh, but you know, either a bond or an escrow account, but whatever it's going to be, it's going to be a fund um, that the town will hold the money for. Escrow so, uh, yeah. that actually would be cumbersome. I mean, you're talking about long-term retaining. I mean, usually these are handled through letters of credit. Um, yeah, something like that, Dennis, you're right. Very similar to what people use instead of, you know, the standard maintenance bond. They, they do a lot of letters of credit, as you know. Yeah, it's not like a road where you can see the construction, then there's going to be an end, and then everything gets released. This is a, this could go on for decades. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so in addition to those uh, requirements from the special exception criteria, criteria some other points uh, that I pointed out in this um the application indicates that the battery energy storage unit system is greater than uh, 600 kVA, uh, but it needs to be uh, calculated in uh, kilowatt hours. Uh, the applicant has provided that information, so I'm going to include it. Uh, it's actually uh, um, 30,000 uh, kilowatt hours uh, or 30 uh, megawatt hours. So I'll just add that to the report. The applicant was good enough to provide that information. Um, I raised the question if, if so I raised the question if there are any other plans for expansion of the facility beyond what is currently proposed, only because they're under the clearing, so I'd like to know, but they said there are no uh, plans for expansion. Uh, the other point, uh, when the solar component of this project is realized, how much energy will be generated from that versus the panels? So the applicant um, indicated that uh, the solar panels would be, generate around 10,000 uh, kilowatt hours on an annual basis. This was very interesting, uh, which they said is very small compared to the batteries uh, that can charge and discharge uh, 30,000 uh, kilowatt hours in a single cycle. So obviously the solar component uh, is important, uh, but uh, taking it from the grid is obviously going to be, uh, I think, a larger um, uh, component to the project. Um, and then I recommend, obviously, the ins installation of a construction fence at the limit of clearing uh, prior to the issuance of a building permit, much like we do with any other clearing property at this point. So since from the aquifer and the Pine Barrens, I think that would be a reasonable request. Um, and that's all I have for this. So I don't know if the board had any questions or the applicant had any questions. Yeah. No, I just... Oh, I think the board, I think, Lorraine, was that you? Yeah, I just had, uh, uh, you, you said... Per, per cycle, what is a per cycle on the, uh, 
the in output of the batteries. Be here. Uh, what did they say here? The energy generated from the solar panels will be approximately 10,000 kilowatt hours annually. Mm -hmm. And then they said the, which is very small compared to the batteries that can charge and discharge uh, 30 k kilowatt hours in a single cycle. I, I would ask the applicant what they mean by a single cycle since they're here. Thank you. So I'm Adam Cohen of Certain Solar in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, so that, a single cycle is uh, a, typically a day. So okay. 24 hour period. Export that all in one afternoon. I was trying to, to do the math comparison. <laughs> so I, I was going to guess that, but I didn't want to. So thank you. <laughs> okay. So, Are there any, any questions uh, from oh, the Madam, side? Yeah, Madam Chair, if I may, um, I, again, I appreciate um, Mr. Chesa's very comprehensive um, memo and his comments. Uh, we provided some responses to, to his comments. We're fully prepared to address all the remaining issues when we filed the full application. Um, and the only question that we really had, uh, which I, I raised during the first hearing, first off, I, I also wanted to say that we're very excited about this project. Being a, a case of first impression in the town of Southampton, um, we're very um, appreciative of the town uh, who came uh, and amended their code to allow for such use, which we think is a, a beneficial use that's going to um, allow the town of Long Island to meet the uh, standards set forth by the state of New York and, and Governor Cuomo in the, uh, the New York Climate Change Act that was recently passed. And um, I just wanted to ask in terms of timing, because as the board is aware, and I just wanna reiterate, our client is very much in competition for some nice CERTA credits uh, that it's almost a first come first serve basis. So we believe we can get all the application materials into planning staff uh, within about two weeks. Um, so we were wondering whether or not if we could be put onto the, the agenda as quickly as possible um, so we can basically uh, be in a position to apply for and obtain those nice CERTA credits um, because it's a very important component uh, to this project. Anthony, um, do, we need, do we need a public he, hearing on this? Or we, well, yeah, uh, it is a special exception, so we do have to have a public hearing. Uh, Keith, uh, is, you know, put simply put, uh, get, get your completed application to me, um, and I'm an extremely accommodating planner. I will get you on the next available agenda after I get an application in. Oh, that's perfect. Thank you, Anthony. Really appreciate that. And then the question raised by Mr. Finity regarding the, uh, the letter of credit, uh, I talked to my client offline, and they would very much appreciate uh, being able to do a letter of credit, they believe they agree with Mr. Finney that that's the way to go here. Yeah, we're going to look into it, Keith. Uh, we are because it, 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 it's it's not spelled out as you as you could see there. So, okay, very good. It's, we will definitely it's, look into that. It's uh, it's ideal for them to do the letter of credit. So, okay, okay, that's so, all I have. Thank you. Thank you. So, oh, any more comments from the board? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adopt this pre submission report. By Dennis, second by Gloria, and all in favor? Aye. Opposed, abstentions? Six in favor. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Have a wonderful Memorial Day weekend and stay safe. And you too. You too. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. Anthony, today is your day. You have <laughs> another Southampton Princess yeah. Diner. Yep. So this was, you, you all know we had a, a hearing on this. This was um, a discussion to implement uh, the cross-access cross agreement between this survey here is the um, Southampton Diner site. Right next to it, uh, to the west, is uh, Barry's Boot Camp. Um, whoops. So... Um, Basically, everything's in line to sort of just make this connection. Um, uh, Mr. Charos has basically built everything up to the property line. So uh, we're sort of at the point of where we want to get this connected. As you know, um, we did a lot of site planning work for a lot of the properties in this area. So uh, we were trying to get this piece uh, of the cross access uh, opened uh, because we're trying to very simply put, uh, trying to have uh, as much internal traffic circulation um, that keeps people off Montauk Highway as much as possible. 
um, or gets them there as safely as possible um, and try to funnel people as, 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 as much as we possibly can to the controlled intersection at Flying Point. Um, it's just, you know, it, if you look at the County Road 39 study, um, you look at the sort of, uh, you know, a concept plan that was drafted, it just, it basically just shows all the, the parking lots interconnected, um, which is basically what we tried to accomplish when we did the site plans. So we had the hearing, um, and so I basically just put a resolution together to to implement that last cross access. And so, I, I um, your comments, and I'm hoping the board takes your comments in conjunction with the first uh, work session item with the uh, with the life care. Well, there you go. <laughs> it was timely. Um, so um, basically, um, the, the planning board makes the find, following findings that the implementation of the cross access between 10 and 32 Montauk Highway is consistent with the declaration of covenants that were filed for each of these properties um, that would allow the patrons to leave one business uh, without having to re-enter Montauk Highway uh, and to provide direct access to Flying Point Road, which is a controlled intersection. Uh, the second uh, finding, the implementation of the cross access is consistent with the overall goal of the town's 1999 comprehensive plan uh, aimed at facilitating vehicular access between adjoining developments, encourage shared parking and minimize access points along major railways, particularly Montauk Highway. Uh, the third finding, uh, implementation of this cross access um, is consistent with the approved site plans involving all of the properties in, in this area of the intersection of Flying Point and Montauk Highway. Um, given the poor traffic conditions at this intersection and certainly beyond, certainly before, uh, coordinated access uh, among the properties is warranted uh, to provide, like I said, improved internal circulation between sites uh, and trying to help alleviate uh, Montauk Highway uh, issues as much as possible. Uh, and then the fourth point is the implementation of the cross access between the two properties is consistent with the CR39 study plan, uh, land use plan. Uh, which they specifically recommend uh, cross access between all the parcels um, in that plan. Uh, they used a PDD concept plan, uh, but uh, you basically site planned every site there. So it's, it's not much different. The, the recommendations stay the same. Uh, so then I recommend that the planning board implements uh, this 20 foot wide cross access between the two properties um, subject to the following conditions. One, the cross access would be a two way tra uh, traffic between both sites any signage that would prohibit cars from utilizing said cross access would be prohibited. Um, the existing do not enter sign that prohibits access to Montauk Highway to 10 Montauk Highway shall be removed um, because the sign effectively would make it impossible for anybody then to use Barry Boot Camp site to get to the diner site. So the do not enter sign um, doesn't make any sense. I think if, 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 you know, the concern is that, you know, we don't, we don't, or um, the owner of Barry's boot camp doesn't want people going through the site to exit onto Montauk Highway or make a left turn onto Mo Montauk Highway, then uh, we could, we could put signage that, uh, that says that, uh, but the do not enter, I don't think works because if cars can't go through Barry's boot camp site, then they have no access to the diner site. So from, from that point. So I think that was an issue. Um, as the, Mr. Schwartz said last time, if you're going to open it, he'd like to see a speed bump um, installed uh, uh, at the easterly access point where the cross access is. And I think that's a good recommendation. It should be properly identified uh, with markings and or signage. Um, the actually, while we're at it, um, since Mr. Charos is the uh, landlord, I believe, uh, the existing speed bumps at two Montauk Highway um, actually shall be properly identified with markings and signage. I think they're just sort of black right now. Uh, they're hard to see. Uh, it's no use having uh, 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 having them, uh, the speed bumps, if you can't see them. Um, so I think that would be good. Um, upon completion of the improvements, a final survey would be submitted uh, and an inspection by staff would be conducted uh, and that the applicant uh, would have up to six months to at work. Um, uh, you know, I, it's sort of a long time. I really don't want this getting dragged out, to be quite honest. So, you know, we could discuss the time frames. Um, I'd like to get this done sooner rather than later. Well, the strike while the iron's hot, like they say. So make so, it three months. The board's okay with that. I would do that. And I have one additional question, uh, Anthony. Do we sure. need to... Um, put on notice the, the new development on the corner, the flying point development, where we just approved the signs, the Farrell signs. 
Do, do we they, have to? Uh, do they need to know? Does this impact them at all? Um, well, all their uh, all their improvements are in place already. So this is between this all cross axis is between Barry's boot camp site. Right. And, and so I, I don't think so. But the, the I do have one other condition that I, I meant to um, to add. And I didn't I was hoping Kathleen actually had my email because I forgot to print it. Uh, but I think they have to file the um, the uh, some uh, is Kathleen here. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Subject it, to the filing and recording of the cross access easements. OK, good, 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 good. Two good. parties. Yes. OK. Parties. That's it. That was the only other condition I wanted to add. Okay. Any any questions on this? We've uh, we've had it around for a long time. If nothing, um, a motion to approve the cross access agreement by Dennis. Second, second. by Craig. All in favor? Aye. Opposed abstention. Six in favor. Thanks, Anthony. Thanks, so everybody. Have, and they should be able to do that in three months. It's not. Yeah, they're, they're chopping at the bits. Yeah. It'll be done much sooner. Good. Um, number 13, the Fisher Organization. Yes, um, Fisher Organization, and um, I believe Rob Merrihue is here for that. Okay. Use No good, Charles? Use it. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, Okay, so this, um, this is just a little two lot subdivision R10 zoning district, um, 1490 Flanders Road, existing residents. Um, they're looking to do two lots. Um, basically the one lot in the front, one lot in the back. You got Birch Avenue here, which is a private road. Uh, you got some wetlands uh, in, in this area. Um, although, um, uh, most of the, um, actually the, all the setbacks, uh, you know, the structural setbacks and um, uh, upper setbacks uh, fall off the property. So they, there's really no particular wetlands issues with the property. It's really actually exceeds the, the setbacks. Um, but nevertheless, you know, they're flagged and identified as they should be. Um, so it's just a two lot subdivision, final application. And uh, I'll just go through the resolution. It's um, a type two action under CICRA. Um, so there was no further environmental review. Um, and in this particular case, the property had been uh, previously disturbed and had some structures back here way back in the day that have been removed. Uh, so this is one of the rare cases where uh, we didn't need an archaeological study. I just wanted to point that out. Um, we deemed the application complete in February and held a final hearing in March, which was followed by a 30-day written comment period. Uh, one neighbor raised concerns about uh, any road work or any road improvements uh, to the private road, which uh, I will get to in, in the resolution. Um, the pre-application report uh, was issued in January of 2019, January 24th, 2019, and the map is consistent with that report. Uh, the health department issued an approval for this on December 31st, 2020. Um, the subject property was created by a subdivision map from 1944. It's called Map of Bayview Farms. Um, a condition of the approval is in here will be an abandonment of the underlying map as may be applicable. Um, we always do that as may be applicable only because uh, to be quite honest, uh, many times I can't even figure out when the county requires it and when they don't. Uh, so I just put it in there as a standard requirement and if the county doesn't require it, then that's just one less thing the applicant has to do. Uh, it's not subject to Long Island workforce housing um, and uh, payment of a park fee um, in this case. Uh, we got comments from the engineer, a very standard uh, three inch rain, uh, three inch drainage um, and uh, some basic comments. Uh, he talks about the road review in here, which I've incorporated uh, into the uh, project. Uh, we got comments from fire prevention. Everything is good there. Uh, we got comments from the conservation board. Obviously, the IA systems will be required. Uh, wetlands are all good, and um, they're recommending a 50-foot uh, buffer on lot uh, two, which let me just show you, which would basically be here. There's some uh, county land here. I don't know exactly what the county land is for. Uh, so they're recommending a 50-foot buffer here. Uh, there's no clearing restrictions or anything. I think in this particular case, because the buffer doesn't even uh, serve uh, as a wetlands buffer. Um, 
So I don't know that a 50 foot buffer is necessary here only because we're not looking at a huge area of uh, all existing vegetation. I think the purpose of the buffer to prevent encroachment into the county land is, is um, fair, um, but I think that could be accomplished with 25 feet. If the board wants 50, we could do 50, but I think 25 is okay here. Can we um, see the area? Can you show oh, sure, the sure, sure. Well, there are a lot of trees back there. No, there are some, yeah. I've been out to the property. There's a, there's a stand, but, you know, I, again, I think that um, it's, it, I leave it up to the board in this case. Um, will, they, will those trees be accommodated in 25 feet? Um, probably not. That's why they said 50. Yep. So that's the, so it's in, it's, it's in there though, Jackie. Yeah, I have it in there. Okay. Um, so that was the conservation board comments. Um, and those were the only other comments. Oh, no trail implications from the trails advisory and no comments from Flanders Fire District or the CAC. Uh, so then uh, the resolution has the conditions of approval. Uh, the final map revisions are listed here. Um, uh, labeling the lots as lots one and two, removing the building envelopes, showing the postal delivery numbers, um, adding the building setbacks to apply to each lot uh, for current zoning uh, or as modified by any ZBA variants. Um, if, I don't know if they got variances here. I have to look at that. If they didn't, I'll take that out of there. My apologies. Uh, a couple of map, map notations, standard map notations, payment of the park fee for $2,500. Uh, submission of the uh, Declaration of Covenants and Restrictions. Um, the standard ones, no further subdivision, no lot line changes without planning board approval, no new utility poles, uh, the installation of utilities underground, a three inch rainfall um, for uh, per the engineer. Uh, I always add this statement, retention of storm water runoff um, on site. Um, uh, the only other issue, access to lot one shall be from Birch Avenue only and the existing driveway onto Flanders shall be removed and allowed to revegetate. You know, right now, I believe this existing house has a driveway off of Birch here and a driveway off of uh, Flanders <coughs> Road here. You know, I left it grade because if you wanted to eliminate this access off this main road and just keep it on the private road, if the board thought that that was necessary, we could do that. So I've incorporated it into the, to the resolution. Uh, this is a heavily traveled road, um, but then it's getting worse, as you know, every year. So I think Birch is a better option. Um, what else did I have here? Um, okay, prior to the issuance of a building permit on the vacant lot, they're going to have to go to road review. So the uh, the neighbor who raised concerns about any road improvements, uh, there will be road improvements required as a result of this subdivision. So that'll be made. Uh, the second uh, grayed out area here was the 50 foot wide naturally vegetated buffer along the easterly property line. Uh, so if you're agreeable to that, um, I put it in all the standard language for a 50 foot buffer. Um, no, no removal of vegetation, no structures, uh, no anything. Um, and then I put in the minimum setbacks uh, for structures, minimum setbacks for wastewater um, because of the wetlands. Like I said, they, they meet those setbacks, but uh, I like to keep them in there. Um, the high priority uh, area, so the installation of the IA system, uh, the installation of leaders, gutters, and other stormwater control devices, uh, and then the project limiting fence uh, around the um, proposed development. And again, those are all the standard wetlands uh, permit uh, conditions, so we've, we've, we've included all of them. Um, compliance with uh, the town code for driveway safety standards, a submission of a mortgage consent, submission of a title certification. Uh, again, a certificate of abandonment um, of the underlying subdivision map if it's required by the county. Uh, town attorney approval of all legal documents. Uh, submission of four mylars and 10 paper prints of the final map, um, which will be submitted for signature uh, and the recording of that map within 62 days of the signature. Thanks, Anthony. Any questions from the board? Any questions from Rob Merrihue? Uh, good morning. Oh, good afternoon, Robert Mary for the applicant. I, my, uh, we have no problem with on lot one uh, having the access to the main road driveway uh, be um, extinguished. But I would ask that the board consider that 50 foot buffer. If you go back and you look at the picture from the GIS, I don't know if Anthony can bring that up. Sure. My client has no intention to, to remove those trees that are more. Uh, 
looking at the area that is um, contiguous with the, the lot that is owned, the landlocked lot that's owned by Suffolk County right now, you see the trees that are re on your reading left. Those two trees are, also have trees behind them that are still on the property. And I would ask for a 25 foot buffer because that size of property for a buffer is substantial amount of square feet that is being essentially rendered utterly useless to the applicant or any subsequent owner. Uh, uh, certainly the trees that are behind that, um, and of course I'm moving my cursor and you can't see it, but <laughs> the uh, those trees would would be in that 25 foot buffer. And there's no uh, current plan to remove these trees, but if you look at how large that piece of land is that they're asking for that buffer, it is substantial. We've okay. seen a lot of clear cutting, Rob. You know, people uh, may want 25 feet, but then eventually 25 feet get cleared. Well, yeah, well, if someone does that, they should be spanked accordingly, but we're asking for 25 feet. How big is the lot? How big is the lot? Uh, it is... Um, huh. Rob, you said that the lot was so small. They're around, they're around uh, it's, uh, it's 17,000 square feet. And, and it's a 10 square foot? Where is approximately the 25 foot mark? Can you show it on your, with your cursor? Where would it be 25 feet? Yeah. Uh, you, this, this square that you see that I'm doing here would be half of that. Oh, okay. So that's the 50. And this is, uh, your zoning here is what, 10,000 square feet? Yeah, it's R10. All right, and you've got a 17,000 square foot lot. So it's oversized. It is oversized, but by taking away that 50 foot buffer, you're right. reducing a 17,000 square foot lot to essentially uh, a little more than 13,000 square feet. And that seems excessive, particularly in this area. I think, could you go back to the coverage picture, the street picture? Yeah. And is that, tree, is that a cluster of trees there that you would be cutting down? Nobody has any plan to cut those trees down because there's no need to. Yeah, We've I taken know. the house and Anthony's already shown it to you, but you know, the, the building um, envelope as well as where we plan on putting the building. So we make sure we achieve all the setbacks. Um, but uh, there's those two trees that you see, and then there's a number of trees behind it to the right um, that are, that would still be there. Hopefully they're always there or, you know, the whole 50 feet. But if we'd like to the 25 feet to protect the, that other screening area, although uh, candidly, there's nothing ever being built on that any of that county land. Um, but the 25 feet is what we're requesting, and I would hope that the board would uh, acquiesce in their wisdom. Again, okay. we, could, we could request a, a split rail fence to be put up as well at 25 feet. Yeah, that, we, would, that, that, we, would, we would be more than amenable to put that up. Yeah, that's a good suggestion, Jackie. What's the difference? 25 to 30. How about 30 feet? We'll, we'll get the fence. Okay. We'll get the split okay. rail. Okay. All right. So you want to do 25 with a split, split rail? Yeah. yeah. I could do that. Can I also... Um, You're pushing your luck, Rob. No, no. <laughs> well, all, I would, all I would ask is that in the split rail fence um, that we could at least put either a small, maybe three foot wide opening or a gate because my concern would be down the road God forbid someone shows up with an adverse possession claim because of the fence. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you. So 25 feet with a split rail. Yep. So I'll make that change. Okay. Thank you. Any other, any other comments? If not, do I have a motion to approve as amended by Dennis, second by Zuccarelli. All in favor? Aye. Opposed, <laughs> abstention, six in favor. <clears throat> Thank you, Anthony. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see you all later this evening. Good work. Thank you. Jackie Fenlon, you have the Bridgehampton Association. Uh, yes. And Charles, could you please let in Brian Grogan, um, Jerry Outerkirk, and Jane? I forget her name offhand. Sorry. Is this not Peter Cook as well? Uh, yeah. Peter Cook might also be present. Only Brian and Jerry. Okay. No Jane? No. Okay. All right, so um, let me share my screen. Give me one moment. All 
All right, so can you all see that letter? Yeah. Okay, so um, we were actually on site last week and the Bridgehampton Association is well underway with construction of the clubhouse. It's really looking good. Um, there's a slight miscommunication, um, I believe more so on their end where they wanted to modify the parking area drainage design, um, which we told them would need planning board approval. That has since been approved within the recent like two or three weeks by the town engineer. Um, so we're comfortable with the modifications made to the plan and we wanted to bring it back to the planning board. They are now asking for some minor modifications which includes that drainage and parking uh, design, really just the design of how the drainage functions. Um, still the same layout of the parking area. Um, but with phasing, they would like to do uh, the driveway and parking lot work. So that way they can finalize that and at least get members to the beach um, in June. And then phase two would be the building construction and utilities as well as the sanitary system. And then they would like to have phase three be the a landscaping berm which now that there's been recent clearing and also a redevelopment of the neighboring parcel, they would like to do a landscaping berm. Um, so the landscaping berm is right along here. Um, that way in the future they can landscape and berm this, that would be phase three. So essentially what the phases would be would be to finalize the parking and drainage required by the site plan and the modified approved plans. Then phase two would be the building and all utilities sanitary system. Um, with, which has the leaching field over here. And then the third phase would be finalizing the landscaping berm, which is a modification. Um, I, when I was on site, I also noticed that there's a small kiosk right here, which would basically be a member check-in area for those who are just you know, pulling in, check-in, and then walking to the beach without utilizing the facilities. And then I have brought... When you say phasing, how, uh, is there a time period that they're providing for that? Well, basically allows me to sign off on the work in three phases. Mm -hmm. um, so this would be almost immediately. The building they're hoping for July and the landscaping might be later on. You know, they want to focus on the parking, getting everyone there safely, and then finalizing the building. Their goal is by mid-June, but with the, you know, hard date of July 4th weekend. That's optimistic. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, are there any questions from the board? Okay, who is here now to speak to this, Jackie? I have Brian Grogan and then also Jerry Outerkirk, who is um, associated with the Bridgehampton Association. Jerry or Brian, if you're there, do you have some comments? Uh, no, I, I, um, this is Brian Grogan with PW Grocer. I think Jackie summed it up. Uh, unless the board has any questions, I don't think I have any comments to add at this point. So I just, um, I just wanted to let you know that we've all been working on this behind the scenes. Uh, I've been working really closely with Tom Houghton, the assistant town engineer and Brian, um, just to make sure that we got the driveway and parking modification plan on record. So this would authorize that modification as well as the small kiosk. And then I also made findings about the requirements for the phasing um, and it's just a uh, resolution is here for your consideration. Okay, why don't you just read those conditions at the end into the record and we'll take a vote on it. Sure. Um, so the applicant shall submit a separate landscaping revegetation plan for the landscape berm and revegetation areas uh, related to the temporary swip berm and construction entrance along Mid Ocean Drive. The engineering department to be contacted for um, pro proper inspections and fees during the process. No certificate of occupancy or compliance will be issued until phase two is complete, which is the building, and then a maintenance bond on the landscaping once the landscaping is installed. And you've clearly spelled out the different phases, just as you explained to us, right? Yeah. Phase one, yep. phase two, phase three. Yeah, and so I have the letter and then I reference them in the resolution and then they're also noted on the plans. So everything is very consistent. So if there's no further discussion, can I have a motion to approve the phasing for Bridgehampton Association? Motion. By Glorian, second by Zuccarelli. All in favor? Aye. Opposed, extension, six in favor. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Jerry. You're all Thank you. Uh, okay, <laughs> Thanks, I'm Jackie. Gonna, You're welcome. To the woods at Hampton Bays. Yes. Uh, let me share the screen again. All right. 
So this is the resolution I prepared based upon our discussion for the waiver of section 292.18A2. I reviewed this with Kathleen and this is very similar to the version that was sent out in the packet. I just went over with Kathleen's. There were some minor uh, edits, more gram grammatical and um, form. So this is a resolution that um, basically makes findings consistent with the planning board. Um, so uh, the finding is right here on the bottom, which is, this is just the basic uh, description and code requirements. So one of the findings I made was that the planning board finds the specific request is unique given the fact that the town is providing 600 gallons per day of flow credits for the two affordable housing lots, which has contributed to the health department delay and that there's also been delays related to COVID-19 pandemic and finds that this is a rare situation and warrants the waiver. And whereas the planning board also further finds the applicant will be required to obtain Suffolk County Depart Department of Health approval for the final plat prior to signature of the final plat by the planning board. And therefore is, in this one instance finds that the waiver request is appropriate and therefore all public healthy health safety and general welfare, requi welfare requirements will be met prior to the subdivision map being signed by the planning board and well before recording the sign final plat with the Suffolk County Clerk's Office. Um, and so I had a quick that will waive the requirement pursuant to 292.18A2, which is health department approval at the final application submission phase. And we require a letter claiming no vested rights for the approval and uh, the basic condition that they were agreed to last time that they would provide Suffolk County Department of Health approval on the final plat prior to signature. No time, no time uh, requirement here, Jackie? No. No, because basically this gives them the ability to get in their plans. They're work, uh, they got me electronic plans and they're working on getting me the physical plans. So once I get those physical plans that I've been reviewing in the meantime, we'll just schedule this um, for a public hearing and move forward with completeness. Okay. Okay. Was there anyone here that wanted to make a comment? If not, uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve the Woods and Hampton Bays, the waiver. Motion. Motion by Gloria and second by Dennis. All in favor? Aye. Opposed abstention, six in favor. Thank you. Moving on, Harvey Sternberg. Uh, they actually asked for that to be off the agenda. Um, just so you know, there's no real issues with it, but um, we also need to consider an extension. So they weren't able to supply me with the extension request. So they'd like to do both on June 10th. Okay, so 16 is off the agenda. Off the agenda, yeah. 17 M4 Lumber Holdings. Uh, now, Jackie, you might be familiar. I told you that um, there's actually two drainage swales on this. Um, so what happened was we were, I don't know why, but historically we were focusing on um, the Eastern drainage swale, which is actually a little bit more mild. Um, and then when I went out to the site recently with the attorney, um, actually, uh, Charles, could you see if Brian Casio? is still on the meeting. Um, he's familiar with this and it's an extension, but I just wanted to see if he was still in the, in the meeting. Um, but basically we're looking at a possible slight modification to the ag reserve and to the lots to make sure we really don't change this um, water course. This, um, you guys may be familiar, especially those of you, um, you know, who know the Bridgehampton area, but this is the swale that there's a culvert under Scuttle Hole Road then it continues and there's easements along the properties. Then there's like the horse rescue farm. This would be the next parcel south. Um, so when you look at the topo, you know, I don't know why, but previous plans really focused on the Eastern swale, but when you're there physically, and now that the property is a little bit, you know, more overgrown, you can actually see that the swale is actually more prevalent along the Western portion. So I really don't want to make sure that, I want to make sure that this is not a problem further down the road. So the applicant's attorney and I have been working closely and we're actually meeting with Tom Houghton on Friday tomorrow to review alternate layouts. So I'll provide that to the board. Um, once we have a better plan and then we'll come back to the board. So they asked for an extension until June 22nd so that it can work on that. Extension into June 22nd. Yep. Okay. So I have a motion for the extension. Motion, motion by Robin, second by Zuccarelli, all in favor? Aye. Opposed extension, six in favor. Okay, Jackie, Lillian Court. Uh, in Lillian Court, actually, I was ready to continue with the report, um, but I, unfortunately, I was missing some of the standard referrals that we received. So I just asked for this to be also extended to June 22nd. Uh, this is the one where they're trying to maintain access to Lillian Court for possible future subdivision. 
Um, so, you know, one of the main things is that um, I would recommend that this be actual deeded land rather than easement. So that way the purpose of the frontage is actually accomplished now. So that's what my report reflects and the attorney is aware of that. But just so I can get the referrals that I'm waiting on, this would also be an extension until June 22nd. Okay, motion to the extension to June 22nd. Motion. Motion by Gloria and second by Zuccarelli. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed abstention, six in favor. Now I know why they weren't in the packet, Jackie. Yeah, that's why, because I was kind of waiting and I was asking and you know emailing like, hey, do you have comments? And I wasn't getting them, so. Oh, what about your walk-on, the middle line? Oh yes, I have a walk on. Yes, thank you, Jackie. Um, uh, Middle Line Highway just has to be re-signed. So Gloria and I'm going to contact you um, for the signature because it's a subdivision. Um, but this would be for a 90-day extension, which would bring the approval from March to June 22nd, and that would allow us to um, acknowledge signature as well today. Okay. Motion for a 90-day extension on the add-on by Dennis. Second by Craig. All in favor? Aye. Opposed abstentions, six in favor. Uh, we have acknowledgement of the West Hampton Country Club signature. You signed that, uh, Gloria, right? I, someone signed it for me. Okay, somebody stamped it signed. Yes. Uh, the Hampton Bays District, um, Grabeski APDD. Same. Same with that, with Claire. 21 was off, we're done. Hey. We are done, so we'll reconvene at six o'clock tonight. So motion, motion to adjourn. Motion by Dennis, second by Zuccarelli. I'll, I'll see you tonight. Thank All you. in favor, aye. aye. Six in favor. We'll see you tonight.